First eight days of Jesus, Jesus went to the temple as we remember. It, the first 40 days is focused around this temple. And uh, Jesus went to the temple to be circumcised. And as you know, God wants his house to be full. And there's no way any man-made building can hold all the people of God, is there? So we know that the building in the Bible was just an illustration of the heavenly building of spiritual people, uh, his church that God was going to build. <clears throat> Abraham was looking for a city made without hands. And God is building a church, a temple of living stones, people made without hands. So, they bring Jesus to the temple. <clears throat> to be circumcised. All right. Now remember. Not everybody liked Jesus. Herod wanted to kill him. Just like civil authorities today. They don't like a higher ruler ruling than civil government. Neither do they like higher laws. The priest, the scribes, the Sadducees, the Pharisees, all of those groups who knew the scriptures and knew the Messiah was coming, knew that Jesus was coming, when he came, they didn't go looking for it. Even though he knew, they knew where he was going to be born and so forth, when they heard that a king was born, they did not go looking for him. A lot of ministers today, though they know the scriptures, don't go looking for Jesus. All right? And uh, when they brought Jesus into this courtyard, they didn't even recognize that it was Jesus. Only two people recognized it was Jesus, and we'll get into them in the coming <coughs> sessions. And... Jesus was here in this courtyard and they didn't let him in to the inner court or the holy place or the holy of holies. That's how you can know the scriptures and not identify God when he moves and God himself. Are you with me? Hallelujah. So, we found last week that everything happened in the Old Testament was for our examples. Everything written was for our admonition upon whom the ends of the world are come. Okay? So the Old Testament is relevant today and it was written for us. Do we understand that? All right, from last week. Then... He says, let no man judge you in meat or drink or a holy day or new moon, Sabbath days, which are a shadow of things to come. All those <clears throat> ceremonial laws and everything were just an example of things to come. They never were intended to be the real thing. Also, the temple in Hebrews 8, 5 was a shadow of the heavenly temple. And the real temple of Moses' tabernacle and Solomon's temple did not have this court. This court was added by Herod and the priests and the Pharisees and the Sadducees of that day. Are you there? When God said, make sure you build the temple according to the pattern, they added this court. There was no women's court in, in Solomon's temple. There was no women's court in Moses' tabernacle. They added that, and that's what humans do. When you get religious, you add to the word. And they added not only the women's court, the women had to stay here. They couldn't go into the inner uh, court. But in Solomon's temple, the males, females, and children could go in. Are you with me? <laughs> but... The Jews and many religious people, even Christians in America, think that the genitals determine your spirituality. 
Are you there? And they want to suppress women today. <laughs> but all of us can go into the inner court and meet Jesus at the altar, meet him at the laver. We can all go in. Amen? We can all go into the holy place and the holy of holies. We don't need priest or anybody. We have free access. Could that be, is that an amen? That's not, could that be an amen? That is an amen. That's what the Bible says. Okay? So, they had these chambers here. Over here is the leper chamber for the defective people. And uh, the defective people, you know, we got to keep them separate. Over here, you have the Nazarites, the holy people. The Nazarites wouldn't cut their hair. They wouldn't trim their beard. They wouldn't eat certain things. You know, they wore certain clothes. That's the holiness people. Over here is the chamber of oils, the anointed ones. You know, the tongues, prophecy, interpretation, gifts of healing, wisdom, knowledge. Oh, they are special ministers. And then over here you got the wood chamber. And the Bible says in Peter that in a noble house there is vessels of honor and there's vessels of dishonor there's gold and silver vessels then there's clay and wood which are the common vessels so the common folks they got their little special place do we have that in the church world today oh yeah all of these little groups you know got their little section fenced off <clears throat> and then you got the women's court. That was the, that was the biggest one, the women's court. You know, that, this is restrain the women. And you notice every rule that churches make, 90% of them is directed toward women. You ever notice that? Hallelujah. <laughs> Anyway, the temple is a heavenly example. We enter into the gate, Jesus. This gate, this court isn't even here. This gate, Jesus, we go to the altar to be cleansed of our sins. We go to the laver to be cleansed of the water of the word and the water of the spirit. We go into the holy place where the spirit of God is. The communion table is and the unity of the body, the the altar of incense where we praise and we worship him and we go right into the Holy of Holies where God is and his word is and the way to get revelation of the word is in the presence of the Almighty God himself. Amen. Not from preachers and books. That's where the word was. The word was in the Holy of Holies. So, we remember all that stuff. The law is a shadow of good things to come. All these ceremonial laws of you know, the labor, the, the sacrificed animals, the incense and all that. They were all shadow laws pointing to the reality of what Christ was going to bring when he come the first time. And folks, they missed him the first time, big time. And I'm expecting most of the church world to miss him the second time. Because we have all, so did the Jews. They had this all figured out. He was going to come, he's going to set up a kingdom, he's going to destroy the Roman Empire, and they were going to be the ruling people and, you know, his special people and all that, and he came meek and lowly and humble, and it just threw him off. How many don't want to miss Jesus when he comes? Yes. You can't get everything figured out. Only the Spirit can reveal things to you. And there were two people that understood and had understanding of Christ's first coming, and we will be hitting those people later. Now, he said in the Old Testament that these were t types and shadows. When you appear before me, who has required these things at your hand? Bring no more worthless sacrifices, incense is an abomination to me, new moons, the Sabbaths, the feast days, the calling of the assemblies, your sacred meetings, your special meetings. He says... All these things I hate. They are troublesome to me. I am weary of bearing them. I never intended for them to be the reality. They were pointed to the reality. 
And he's the one that said to do all these things, but it was to direct us to the real thing. And the real thing was, I want you to wash yourself and make yourself clean. That's what all this stuff is about. <clears throat> Put away the evil of your doings. How do you make yourself clean? By stop doing evil. Stop doing things that harm yourself and others. That's what all these things were about. <clears throat> Cease to do evil, you see. You stop doing evil, you make yourself clean. That's the whole goal and intended pur purpose of God. Do we remember that from last week? And a lot of good Christians who aren't famous, they're, the, they're over here in the common nobodies, you know, but they are washed, they are clean, they're walking in the righteous word of God, they're a, a light to the world, their good works show the, that the power of God is in them and they get not hardly any recognition because all these other folks get special attention. Are you there? <laughs> I mean, just, just soon be a good, common, ordinary Christian. Yes, just walking every day in the light of God's Word. You can't, you can't be a minister if He doesn't call you to be a minister. Get that out of your head. You can't just decide you're going to be a prophet or some special person. God has to do that. Just, you are special. When you accept Christ and you accept being a good father, a good mother, a good child, a, a living a, a, as a good citizen in your nation, that is God's anointing to you amen and you're just as special as these that have what we call the anointing hallelujah now he says learn to do good and seek justice learn to do good that's what all those shadow laws are talking about learning to live right and speak right. And that's why the whole Old Testament was written. So you could go and see what happened to these people who lived right and these people who didn't live right. Are you there? Hallelujah. So you can learn from them and live right. And seek justice. Let me give you a good example of present day of justice. Probably a lot of you have forgotten, but a few years ago, the same-sex movement and the socialists and the liberals tried to get an amendment to the Constitution that all sex has to be accepted. That means you can't hire, if you're a church and they're a homosexual or whatever, you cannot fire them or not hire them because of their sexual orientation. They were going to make this an amendment to the Constitution. The Constitution supersedes all the states. And what most of you forgot is they came very close to passing that. They had 35 states. They only needed 38. And then five states took back and, and changed their mind. So they did get 30 states, but they didn't do it in the time allotted. And so it's a dead, mute amendment try right now. But how many of you out there didn't even know that it ended last year? And we came that close to have an amendment that any kind of sexual, you know, transgenders, uh, any kind of sexual invention, sex with animals, whatever, was going to be protected by the United States Constitution by this amendment. And I, church, where is the church world? You know, I, I hear ministers big ones, talking about God wants you to be happy. And we don't tell our people that there is an injustice going on in America, that an amendment to the Constitution is close to being passed, and that is an injustice, isn't it? 
God wants you to be rich. God wants you to be happy. Yeah. Jeez. God wants you to be healthy. And we overlook justice. How many could sharpen their, their focus more on justice? Yes. We, we want our children to be raised in a just nation. We don't want to just come to church and do our little uh, Christian thing and while our nation is falling apart and our future generations are going to be destroyed by these bad, un unjust laws. Now that's what God intended. Live right, stand for justice and what's right. I don't hear a lot of Christians standing up for justice. We're just happy with working, going home, and living the good life. <clears throat> and then when in, injustice comes, we're going to be, oh, we've got to seek God and pray. We should be seeking God and praying about it now and doing something about it. Could that be an amen? So, Romans 2.28 he is not a Jew who is one outwardly. He is not a Christian who is one outwardly. Put a cross around your neck or a t-shirt that with a cross on it or whatever doesn't make you anything necessarily. Now I wear t-shirts that have scriptures on them and all that and a hat and all this but that doesn't make me a Christian. Amen? <clears throat> Nor is circumcision. Now remember, Jesus came to the temple to be circumcised. All right? And those are shadow things. They're not the real thing. Circumcision is a shadow thing. Points to the real thing. He is not a Jew which is one outwardly, nor circumcision which is one in the flesh. See? It's not the fleshly circumcision. Well, if it's not, what is it? He is a Jew who is one inwardly. The real Christian is one that's been born by the Spirit inside. We start from the inside out, not the outside in. <laughs> Amen? All right? The real Jew is one inwardly. The real Christian is one inwardly. inwardly. Circumcision is of the heart. Whoa! The heart, the mind, the will, and the emotion. How many got emotions? Yeah. How many have a will, a desire for it? Yeah. And how many have a mind? What happened to the rest of you? You guys get left out? <laughs> See, we have thinking capabilities. And he wants to circumcise your mind, your emotions, and your desires to conform to his. He wasn't interested in that fleshly circumcision in the first place. It was simply an illustration of what he really wanted to do in you. All right? And he is a Jew in the spirit. We are a Christian in the Spirit. Unless you are born of the Spirit. Isn't that what Jesus said? You must be born again of the Spirit. The Spirit comes and works in you. Causes the conviction. <clears throat> the Word brings the faith. You didn't come to God by faith. Them people out there aren't teaching you right. You heard the Word and that Word put faith in you. To come to Christ. Faith comes by hearing what? The Word. <laughs> Hallelujah. And it's the Word of truth. And faith comes by anybody hearing anything. But faith that's from God comes from hearing His Word of truth, the Bible. Now, if faith comes by hearing the word of truth, which one is greater, truth or faith? Truth. Say it. Truth. truth. Faith is nothing without truth. <laughs> Amen? Amen? 
Hallelujah. <laughs> and then that spirit convicts us of sin, righteousness, and judgment to come. See, conviction, I don't convict myself. People don't convict me. The Spirit convicts me of sin. I'm wrong. Of righteousness. This is what I got to do. And if I don't do it, there is a judgment coming that I'm accountable for. You youngins got that? Sin. Right? Wrong. And if you do wrong and you don't correct it, there's a judgment coming where you will be corrected. And this is why Felix trembled. When Paul preached this simple message to Felix, the king, he shook because he was going to be judged. Are you there? Hallelujah. I'd like to see more shaking in the church from the conviction of sin and righteousness and less shaking in the emotional thing. Could that be an amen? amen. <laughs> All right. He says, not in the letter, not in the Paul's epistles, not in the prophet's letters, none of that. If you don't exercise the word, it is profitless to you. And the shadow laws were never intended to be the real truth. Are you with me so far? All right. A Jew and a circumcised person of the heart, praise does not come from men, but from God. What's that mean? Well, when you do things to satisfy men, like the Muslims, they bow three times a day and they'd all do go through this routine. And who are they giving honor to? Muhammad told them to do it. A man. God didn't tell them to do it. A man told them to do it. And so they do it to please the prophet Muhammad. And his leaders that came down there. Are you there? Is it? If I cut my hair a certain way because my church says I got to cut it a certain way. Who am I pleasing? God or the church? The church. Think about that. Are we doing things because some organization or somebody out there is telling us to do it and not God himself? That's the difference. <clears throat> we want to please God and have God pleased with us. Is that an amen? amen. All right. Now, Ezekiel 36, 26. I'm going to give them a new heart and a new spirit and remove the stony heart, that hardened heart, that insensitive heart. See, before I got saved, I had an insensitive heart, a hard heart toward God and toward His word of truth. How many of you had the same thing? Yeah, yeah. We were, we were pleasing ourselves and doing what we wanted to do. God says, I'm going to come and I'm going to give you a new heart. How does he do that? Through the circumcision. He's going to cut away the hardness of your heart so that you have a sensitivity to what's right and what's wrong and the conviction to do right. Isn't that beautiful? It is a work of God. It's not joining a religion. See, I'm not a Christian because my parents were. I'm not a Christian because I went to the Assembly of God Church. I was a Christian when I went to the Assembly of God Church one day after sitting there for a year and I went to the altar and I confessed my sins. I asked God, Jesus to forgive me of my sins, cleanse me of my sins, and to live inside me. And boy, was I shocked that it happened. He came and convicted me of my sins and changed me, washed those sins away, and then the next weekend, I got baptized in water, and then I got baptized in the Holy Spirit. 
Okay, I became a Christian not because I was raised in a Christian home. I had an encounter with Jesus Christ. Are you there? And I stay a Christian by keeping that encounter with Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. That which brings salvation maintains salvation. If Jesus brings it, he maintains it. Is that an amen? And I don't want to go back to being a religious person. Now, in closing, Jeremiah 31, 31, I'm going to make a new covenant with my people in that day. I am going to inscribe and write my laws in their heart. I'm going to do something. Now, these people that say we're not under law, we're under grace, that's all I hear on Facebook. We're not under law, we're under grace. If you're not under law, why did God in his new covenant say he's going to write his laws in your heart? Think about it. We're not under the shadow laws. And we're not under the law of sin and death. But I am under the law of righteousness. I'm under the law of wisdom. I'm under the civil laws. I can't kill people. I can't steal. I'm still under those laws. Can I hear an amen? amen. And God is going to write those laws in my heart. And that's the big difference. But how's he going to write them if I don't get into the word and learn what the word says about the laws? How's he going to do this? I have to read his word, study his word, go to church, have some guy guide me into the word so I can speed up my growth and possess these things. Is that an amen? amen. Hallelujah. Jeremiah 32, 40, talking about that day of the new covenant. I will put my fear in their hearts. Wow. See, this circumcision is important. He wants to take away the hardness out of your heart, your mind, your will, and your emotions, and put good things in their place. And one of them is the fear of the Lord is to what? Depart and hate evil. Depart from evil and hate evil is the fear of the Lord. He said, I'm going to put my fear in your heart. How many could use that in their life? Yeah. Hey. See, this is a spiritual thing, church. So they will never turn from me. You see all these backsliders? There's all kinds of backsliders. You know, teenagers, they grow up in a good Christian home and all that with good parents with good values and then they go to public school or they go to college and they learn other ways and they deviate from their good parents' ways. And, <clears throat> and why? Because they never got circumcised in their heart. They never followed on. How many know the Bible says, add to your faith? Yes. Amen? Yes. They just want to stay back there. Well, I believe, I believe, I'm faith, I'm faith, 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 that. No, you got to add to your faith. And adding to your faith, circumcision into your heart is very important to get a sensitive heart. Sensitive to the things of righteousness, the things of God. And insensitive to the things of the world. They'll never turn from me. They'll never turn. Can you? That's powerful, church. He's going to do something in me that I'm never, and I've never backslid. Even in my mistakes, I never once thought about leaving God, ever. Why? I didn't even know it at the time, but he circumcised my heart. I had a sensitivity to the things of God. Even when I made mistakes, I would get up, shake it off, Get forgiven for it and keep moving. I never once thought about turning my back on Christ. And not because of anything in me, but because he kept his word. Even when I didn't understand circumcision of the heart, he came and circumcised my heart and gave me a sensitive heart for the things of God. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Look at this. 
Jeremiah 50, verse 4, talking about the same day, in that day, that day of the new covenant. Together, unity. Together, they will go, my people will go and seek the Lord. Not music, not some famous speaker. They'll go and seek the Lord, Jesus Christ. Is that why you come to church? To seek the Lord and His Word? You want the Word because you're circumcised and you have a sensitivity, a desire in your heart to learn the Word and to follow the one you're in love with, Jesus Christ. Isn't that beautiful? See, this is not head knowledge we're talking about. This is spiritual knowledge. This is a spiritual work. This kind of faith comes from God. Hallelujah. See, I can read the Bible and I can have faith that I draw out of it for myself. Or I can read the Bible and He comes with His truth in His Spirit and gives me faith to follow His truth, not my opinions. Did I say that right? Yes. yes, that's a big difference. I'm not honored for reading the Bible. I'm honored for reading it and living it, exercising it. Ezekiel 37, 26. I will multiply them and set my sanctuary among them forever. Didn't Jesus say, I will never leave you? I will be with you even to the end of the age. That's the covenant he made, and that's the kind of heart he wants to give you. A sensitive heart for his truth, for himself, to please God. Not intellectually done. But the mind is involved. But it's spiritually done. Are you with me? Jesus went to the temple to get circumcised in the flesh. He fulfilled the shadow laws. We go to God's house. <clears throat> or we go to Jesus in God's house to circumcise the heart. Amen? Amen. We, and we keep needing, you know, we can develop a hardness that we didn't have before, and we can come to Jesus, and he cuts that out. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I'm sensitive again. I'm sensitive again. We're going to sing a chorus out of Psalms 51. Create in me a clean heart, O God. <clears throat> Right out of the scriptures. This is what David prayed after he messed up. And I don't want you raising your hands because we mess up one way or another. And I hope it's not flagrant stuff. It's just, you know, those little things that drag us down. And David prayed this prayer, create in me a clean heart, O God. See, come and circumcise my heart, Lord. Get this hardness out of me and get sensitivity to your truths back in me. Renew a right spirit within me. Remember he said, I'll give him a new heart and a new spirit. How many could use refreshing in your spirit? Yes, amen. Cast me not away from your presence and take not your Holy Spirit from me. Restore unto me the joy of your salvation. It is a joy walking with God. And if you don't have it, you need to get it. And renew a right spirit within me. Now let me give you this illustration. Getting saved is like getting married. On that wedding day, man, that bride is decked out. Woo! That groom is decked out. Woo! 
everybody's happy, you know, they have a feast, I mean, and they're all happy, and oh, I'm going to be the best husband, I'm going to be the best wife, oh man, our marriage is going to be the best marriage, and we're going to raise our kid the best way, oh yeah, and everybody, yeah, yeah, yeah. Then some time goes by, and things you didn't know was in that person that comes out, anger, hatred, Selfishness. A lot of things come out. And suddenly the marriage isn't exciting anymore because now we got to be responsible. We had our honeymoon, we had our sex, and we were in high heaven. And then the daily grind of being responsible to be a good husband, to be a good wife, and treat each other right and do what we said in our vows we would do. Now one wants to dominate the other. One's yelling and screaming at the other. Are you there? And then divorce comes. And that's the way it is with a lot of salvation. Oh, people come to God. God actually meets them. They cry and they're so happy. Oh, man. I'm going to serve Jesus all my life. Yeah, boy. Oh, I'm going to be faithful. I'm going to do this. And then the time of just being responsible to live for God comes. And we start drifting away. Our opinions instead of His truths. Our heart gets hard. But oh, it started off so good. Hallelujah. And then we wind up divorcing Jesus. We wind up serving a Jesus that didn't even in the Bible. How many know you can create your own Jesus? You didn't know that? Yeah, you can, you can create your own Jesus and call him Jesus. But it's not the Jesus of the Bible. The Jesus that the Muslims talk about is not the Jesus of the Bible. The Jesus that the Hindus talk about is not the Jesus of the Bible. The Jesus that a lot of preachers out there talking about, talk about and preach about is not the Jesus of the Bible. We need to serve the Jesus of the Bible. Amen? Amen. And in a marriage, we need to keep our word and love one another, be patient with one another. We need to work at making that marriage successful. And everything can't be my way. got to be the right way everything's got to be the right way is that an amen God's way so this morning if you need a tune up in your spirit Jesus is here to circumcise your heart get some hard things out of it and put some sensitive things back into it and if you want him to do a work in your heart today. You know, a lot of Christians don't even read their Bible. I'm on the internet, they don't read their Bible. They just talk what they hear about in books, Christian bookstores. They just repeat something they read somewhere. They don't go to that Bible and read it and, and, and really share the balance of God's Word. They never study it. I mean, to find somebody that studies the Bible is a rarity. How many could read the Bible more? And put some time for study. That's your food. And that's where the life comes from. See, that's not the outward form of Christianity. That's the inward form. If you want Jesus to change your heart today, let's spend about five minutes singing this song. Stand with me. Or stand for Jesus. Saying, Lord, I mean it. I want you to come and change me.